The two opium wars were bloody conflicts that destroyed imperial China and remains to this day as one of the most humiliating affairs for the Chinese while most profitable for the British Empire. While the Qing Dynasty maintained isolationist, tensions heightened when Great Britain began illegally selling opium, triggering the two opium wars. Both conflicts were followed by forced compromises, eventually leading to the downfall of the Qing Dynasty. At the time when the British Empire was gaining power, China's exports were boosting due to popular tea culture in Great Britain. The British mainly exported Chinese tea, porcelain, silk, and pottery. However, Great Britain's excessive import led to significant amounts of trade deficits, slowly crippling down their economy. In contrast to the Qing Empire, Great Britain's exports were not great in the Qing Dynasty due to early development of silk in China, which was mainly preferred over the Great Britain's silk. While exports increased but imports decreased, the British started to have significant amounts of trade deficits, which slowly faded the trade between the British Empire and the Qing Dynasty. Great Britain's weakened economy made them difficult to mine silver, which China desired to receive in return to their products. At the same time, the Qing Dynasty maintained isolationist stance, limiting trade and blocking the Western influences. Consequently, the British started to harvest poppies from India, which is their colony. The country traders and bribery plays a huge role in bringing opium into China. When China's law forbade all use of opium except for uses for health, the country traders received bribes from the smugglers and started to sell the opium, which marked the start of the opium addiction. They received heavy bribes, such as gold and silver, so the country traders could not easily resist bribery. The smugglers also bribed the Chinese officials in order to buy opium from the country traders. The Chinese citizens started to buy opium and become addicted. A number of people were arrested and were punished for illegally selling opium, but the election could not be stopped. As time passed, the number of opium addicts continued to increase, and opium became more highly valued by taking up about 57% of China's import and becoming one of the major sources of currency. More people were starting to get addicted to opium, causing huge social and economic disruptions. People could not live a proper life and could not properly do their jobs, slowly crippling down China's economy. People had no control over their own body and could never escape from addiction. As opium addiction became more severe, the demand of opium started to increase. From the 1730s to 1830s, the number of opium chests imported to China increased from 200 chests to 23,570 chests. Finally, the opium starts to distort the country since anyone could access opium and anyone could be addicted, from farmers to government officials. Lin Zhe the commissioned official in solving the issue, writes a formal letter to Queen Victoria of Great Britain to stop the export of opium. However, the letter ends as an aimless attempt, not being able to resolve the issue. At last, the Qing government, who could not remain tolerant of the issue, decides to trash all the opium, crashing more than 20,000 chests of opium down the sea. The Qing government also decides to decrease trade with the Great Britain, increasing hostility between the Great Britain and Qing dynasty. Even after all the opium was discarded, bribery behind the law was not an easy problem to solve. The number of addicts did not decrease as fast. The British people started to disturb the Chinese society, but the British government refuses to let them be tried under the Chinese law. The British continues to destroy Qing Dynasty's territory by destroying Chinese blockades near the Pearl River and Canton City by gunboats. Continuous violent campaigns from the Britain about isolationist China at last triggered the First Opium War. The breakout of the First Opium War marked the starting point when China started to move a step forward to modern China. In the two Opium Wars, the British Empire wanted to receive a lot of money in order to recover their corrupted economy. When the First Opium War broke out in November 3, 1839, many crucial parts of the Qing Dynasty's territories were injured. Maintenance of isolationist stands for the Qing Dynasty was one of the main reasons that led to their loss of the First Opium War. Their limited technology had such a big technological gap when compared to the British Army. The First Opium War ends as a loss of the Qing Dynasty, mainly due to the disturbance that opium brought and the technological gap. The Qing Dynasty's primitive technology, such as bows, proves completely no match to the recent technology that the British Army had, such as muskets. Along with better fundamental support, the British Army had much stronger strategy than the Qing Dynasty's army did. After losing the First Opium War in 1842, the Qing Dynasty is forced to sign the Treaty of Nanjing, which required the Qing Dynasty to pay $21 million in return to the wasted opium, ceding the land of Hong Kong, providing entire amnesty to those that aided the British, and opening the ports of Canton, Amoy, Fuchao, Ningpo, and Shanghai to trade in well-understood tariff. 
The end of the First Opium War announced the end of the traditional China, as the British Empire influenced the Qing Dynasty with their policies, shaping the nation the way they wanted. The Qing Dynasty became more open to foreign trades, and they started to have deficits in their economy because of the huge monetary reimbursement that was given to the British Empire. Tensions rise even more when the Chinese destroys foreign factories and British ships. Trading between the Qing Dynasty and the British Empire decreases, which the British was not satisfied with. Then, France decides to join the British military expedition, using the murder of a French missionary as an excuse. In 1858, France and the Great Britain starts to force the Qing Dynasty into negotiation of the Treaty of Tianjin, which included increasing Western trading residents, the right of foreign travel in China, freedom of movement of Christian missionaries, and later on the legalization of the opium. The Qing Dynasty refuses to sign the treaty, and the hostility resumed between the two countries. In 1860, France and the Great Britain bring even larger military force to fight over the Qing Dynasty to make forced negotiations. The two strong nations completely distort the batteries of China, leaving a deep mark in the Qing Dynasty. After creating a lot of reform movements, the Qing Dynasty comes to an end due to their unstable society. Modern China today has still strengthened laws about illegal uses of drugs, and they are not tolerated. The humiliation and chagrin left by the two violent conflicts and the two forced compromises will leave an everlasting mark in Chinese history.